So yeah, that's uh, that essentially sums it up for uh, building your your empires. Um, I've already got. I already went over quite a while ago um, which which starting weapons is the best. As I said, missile weapons. Um, I think we pretty much cover it. There there is no real better ethics or or authority. That largely falls under, you know, the ethics and authority that you pick largely is determined by the civic picks you want. Uh, because my min-max empires, where I go heavy on, uh, I want research bonuses left and right, uh, because I'm always some level of materialist in that, in that sense, I always go technocracy, which is a really, really good um, civic to, to go with. Uh, like you can't go wrong picking that ever in any empire um, so I mean there's that but but everything else pretty much everything else like the appearance of your city the kind of starting planet um, you go with you know the appearance of your ships all that stuff that is 100% flavor uh, the symbol of your empire uh, you know the name and the flag of your empire all that stuff you can you can pick and just you know do do whatever you want with that. But hopefully, uh, tonight's stream gave you a good idea of how of of how you want to go about uh, creating your empire. Um, now, by extension, you can use this information to not only create a good empire that you regularly play in your Iron Man games to try and win the game or try to complete certain uh, certain achievements, stuff like that. You could, in fact, use this information to create, quote-unquote, bad empires. Um, uh, yes, empire exit creation. Let's take a look. I've actually made a couple. Um, and you might be wondering, well, how do you create a bad empire? Uh, well, for starters, you give it a bunch of... Um, you give it a bunch of traits and uh, civics and stuff that... Are, have no real bearing uh, on the game or are just straight up bad. For example, uh, here's here's one that I made, the Boom Shrooms. I gave them Venerable, which gives them really long leader lifespan. Uh, you know, not a big deal, but I also gave them Conformist. These are essentially two, the two bad trait picks that I pointed out. Like, not necessarily, like Conformist is, is a straight up, you know, not a good pick. And venerable is is a straight up not not a good pick. And then I just gave them stuff like non adaptive to decrease their habitability. They're wasteful, so their consumer go goods cost is increased, and they're weak, so their army damage is uh, reduced, and they uh, they produce less minerals. So essentially, the idea behind this is that it's more difficult. Like they have a tougher time expanding in the early game. Uh, because their habitability is reduced a bit. Uh, their pops use more consumer goods, so it affects their uh, production of of uh, the, the resources that are used for maintaining pops. And they're weak, so that if it ever gets to the point where they invade me or I invade them, uh, they have to have a pretty significant advantage in terms of numbers and types of armies in order to actually take myself, take me on, for example. Um, you know, also venerable and conformists, uh, their governing ethics attraction is increased to 25%. And why am I okay with conformists? Because they're fanatic pacifists where they can only use defensive wars only. Um, it does greatly increase their monthly unity generation and their core sector systems, but because they're fanatic pacifists, they will never declare war on me. And they're also xenophiles, so it's much easier for them to um, actually be friendly with me, uh, further reducing the likelihood that they'll attack me. Um, so on and so forth. So that, plus the fact that I never gave them any civics. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you noticed... But uh, I totally did that. You could actually give them a bad civic, which is... Where the heck did it go? I guess it's not there. Which one was it? Which one was it? There it is. Exalted Priesthood. We can't pick it because they have to be spiritualist and oligarchic, which is fair. Um, if, you, if I didn't make them fanatic pacifists, I could make them 
plain old pacifists and give them spirit and make them somewhat spiritualist and give them the oligarchic authority and then i could also give them exalted priesthood so that their governing ethics attraction is uh you know further increased by another 20 percent. so combine that with friggin conformists and it's very difficult for them to shift away from their pacifist roots uh, by by doing that or I could just take away like xenophile and make them spiritualists so they would be fanatic pacifists spiritualists who have a lot of governing ethics attraction so it's extremely unlikely that they'll move away from being fanatic pacifists and will and will pretty much never declare war on me um, they'll be strictly defensive and that's not the only empire that I have that I've uh, that I've built like this I've also got uh, I've also got the Bobble Mandate, which um, is, if you can see here between the traits, venerable, conformists, not adaptive, wasteful, and weak. And then these guys are venerable, conformists, not adaptive, wasteful, and weak. They're also fanatic pacifists, and they're xenophiles. The only difference is their government is de democratic, and uh, their ship appearance is avian as opposed to molluscoid. And then the I've got the Great Mistake, which is Imperial, but again, Venerable, Conformist, Non-Adaptive, Weak, Wasteful, and their Ethics and Civics, Xenophile, Fanatic, Pacifist, and I picked no Civics for them. And once again, the, the only thing that's different is their ship appearance. And they all start with Mass Drivers, which have the smallest range out of all weapons in the game. So if I pick one of my... Uh, one of my empires, like the Iljali cult, which starts off with nuclear missiles, I can essentially get off way more missile barrages. If, if it's like in the early, 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 early game, I'm trying to take them out with just our naked corvettes going at it. My naked corvettes are getting off one, maybe two missile barrages before their naked corvettes even get in range with their weapons. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm just trying to get kind of kind of trying to give you an idea of what you could do for empire generation. Now, if you actually go do what I did and create these quote unquote bad empires, you can in fact force them to spawn by um, hitting hitting left or right on either the D-pad or the right stick. Uh, as you can see, the little uh, the little bird looking icon that is uh, determining. Uh, whether you're having empire spawning. So on the very far right there, you see empire spawning allowed. The great mistake is allowed to appear in a regular game instead of a randomly generated empire. Uh, if I hit right, empire spawning forced. The great mistake will always appear in a regular game instead of a randomly generated empire. And then of course the last em option is empire spawning forbidden. The great mistake is not allowed to appear in a regular game instead of a randomly generated empire. So you can actually have it where you've got these three empires, these three quote unquote, bad empires that you've created force them to spawn in the game by giving them this little uh, padlock icon and then pick the empire that you want to start a game with and select say only three ai, AI empires this will force all three of those ai empires to be those quote unquote bad ones that you created um you know just for further uh further increasing the likelihood that you know you can go for the win in the game or that you will complete whatever whatever achievement that you are trying to go for, especially ones related to uh, to conquest with throughout the galaxy and stuff like that. Um, so we're, we're closing in on two hours. We're about 10 minutes shy of that, but it's already, uh, it's already about nine o'clock here. I've been talking a lot this evening. Um, I'm, I'm going to break this up. Uh, I'm going to break this up into different sections and upload them to YouTube in parts. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully this, if you guys have been here this whole time throughout this whole stream, hopefully it gave you an idea of um, how you want to go about uh, creating your empire. If you weren't here for the stream, and as I said, you watched this on YouTube, I really hope the, the uh, I really hope this stream or in essence, these videos that I broke up and, um, and have up have since uploaded, I hope they gave you a better idea of um, what you want to do when you're going about building your empire like like i said uh it ultimately comes down to you know what what do you want to do uh what, what are you looking to do here uh do you actually want to go kind of min max uh with an empire here which is what i've pretty much done with the zach Zoan collective uh as you can see i've got uh certain certain picks in there uh, like I've got some of the best traits that you could that you could choose. I've got the best civics you could choose. 
Um, I've got uh, I've got ethics that I'm going for uh, in order to further improve what I what I intend to go for, which is technological domination and stuff like that. And then of course the Sotherian Stellar Coalition are and the uh, Ilgiali cult. They're not exactly the same, but they are pretty bloody close um, to uh, to both of those. Of course, the exception being the Ilgiali cult, which is more towards you know, military superiority as opposed to technological superiority. Um, so hopefully that gave you an idea of, you know, like, how do you want to go about uh, creating creating a decent empire? Or how do you want to go about creating a more role-playing kind of empire, which is what I did with the Sylph Union. Um, this is an empire of elves that I created. As you can see, I have given them the venerable trait, which I would never recommend, but this is largely a role-playing empire. These are elves. They are supposed to be long. They are supposed to be long of life. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you very much for dropping by and watching. Those of you who have been here for the last little bit, I appreciate uh, the, uh, the activity in the chat from you, Cyphus. You're the only one that's actually been, uh, been providing it. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below if the, if you're watching this in YouTube, if you liked this kind of stream, if you like to see, if you would enjoy seeing me do more of them, uh, or if you just want to see me play the game, uh, you know, or anything else that you have to offer. Uh, if I was wrong in a previous statement and you want, and you need to correct me, by all means do so. Uh, or if you have a question, go ahead and ask. Um, Hopefully somebody far more knowledgeable than myself can answer them. As I said, there are people who have been playing the PC game for several years. You've got Aspec, Stefan Anon, and several others uh, who always put out very useful videos. Um, I've personally watched a lot of Stefan Anon's videos because he does a very similar thing where he breaks down, you know, the top species traits, the top civics, um, and stuff like that. And A-Spec is really good for a whole bunch of other stuff too. And, and there's just a ton of information from several other prominent uh, Stellaris YouTubers as well, if you're looking for more information. As I said, most of those people follow PC though, so they're quite ahead of us in terms of volume. And, or sorry, in terms of uh, the version of the game. So it's a little tough finding stuff that's more current to the console version. Um, before I part, all the information that I have stated in over the course of the last two hours is subject to change because we, as I said, this is technically 1.7 of Stellaris. Uh, the PC is up to, I believe, 2.3 now with their most recent update. And it has been stated several times from Paradox that they intend to bring console edition uh, closer to parity with the PC version. Uh, so all of this information is subject to change. If you're watching this in, say, late 2020, it's very likely that um, certain things are completely different uh, because the mechanics in the game have changed significantly since then. So uh, with that said, it's been a fun Friday night. Thanks very much for dropping by. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the weekend. If you watch these on YouTube, feel free to subscribe for more Stellaris Console Edition content. Give it a like if you found something useful in, in any of these parts of videos. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Mobius Y signing off.